Okay, so Aneta Kaur uh, is our final speaker uh, before the coffee break um, on graphical user interfaces. Um, she's a professor at the Max Planck Institute for Intellectual Property and Competition Law. Uh, she's written extensively in the area of design and trade dress for quite some time. Uh, and she's even heavily involved with the drafting of the MPI's Green Paper, which has been brought up a few times already uh, as one of the uh, founding documents for the uh, community design protection here in the EU. Uh, without further ado. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, of course, also, uh, Graham and Mark, for having invited me. And thank you very much also to the previous speakers who made me aware of, uh, well, how far behind I am when it comes to the practical knowledge and experience with the topic that I really dare to address here. Um, uh, I really didn't know what I was doing when I was uh, when I was opting for this uh, for this topic, uh, so I cannot add anything to what they said when it comes to the practical, uh, well, aspects of, of of that protection. What I will try to do, though, is um, also trying to link a little bit to the general topics that we're we're going to address in this in this panel with regard to subject matter and also to uh, to upcoming panels, right? Uh, so um, let me start by just going well back to history. Of course, I'm not going to to tell you the story again and again. Uh, so Paul Meyer already uh, said a lot about how uh, um, uh, uh, the EU uh, design legislation uh, came up. I just want to uh, remind you that well, there were a lot of difficult of differences in the. Uh, um, European uh, countries with regard to the de design legislation prior to harmonization and one of these differences also related to the uh, exactly to the subject matter the understanding of what the subject matter of a design is uh, for instance in Germany we always had this feeling or this, this the concept that uh, design uh, is a sort of copyright, it's just on a lower tier. So the subject matter of design was decreation, uh, just like uh, copyright uh, protects decreation. Uh, totally different from that, of course, other countries, in particular the UK, uh, always uh, um, understood the subject matter of uh, design uh, to be uh, a, well, of course, a, a sort of, of, of grave, creative uh, effort, a shape, but only as applied to an article. We never, in Germany, we never had that, that sort of limitation that design must be applied to uh, an article. And when it comes to understanding of what an article is, uh, then again we can make, t we, there, there were two different types of, of understanding this, or, or two different, uh, let's say, levels of, of uh, understanding this. Um, well, the one and the basic thing is that uh, one, um, uh, yeah, that there needs to be an article uh, of some tangible uh, form. And also a second type of uh, distinction uh, would then apply or would, would then address the question of whether that item, that tangible item could be any sort of tangible product or whether it should be or whether it has to be an article that is capable of independent marketing. I'm just mentioning this in passing because uh, this is something, the second distinction is uh, has been uh, topical in the discussion of uh, design protection for spare parts. It's not GUIs for, the, for, 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 for a moment, but it was spare parts. There is indeed a one decision, I think, of 94 by the House of Lords in the UK saying uh, that, uh, well, spare parts of a complex article that are, are not independently marketed uh, are not even, cannot even be protected as designs. Of course, that was sort of killing a dead cow because uh, from the legislation in uh, in the UK of, of, of 88, there was uh, the must fit and must uh, must match exception anyhow, but of course saying that uh, spare parts cannot even uh, qualify for design protection was even taking it beyond that. And also for uh, graphical user interfaces, of course, this could have been a, a hurdle. I don't think that it was ever addressed under that heading, but it could also be a hurdle because also the, the icons or graphical symbols, uh, they are not uh, marketed as such uh, if they are not works of art. But more uh, important was the first level of distinction, namely that uh, the uh, design must be applied to an article. We heard about the, uh, the difficulties that this creates uh, still. For instance, in Japan, 
uh, and similar uh, difficulties we had in the UK also according to a brief survey that I did in the <coughs> early years of uh, this century uh, similar uh, uh, problems arose in the Nordic countries uh, in Aust uh, and, and in Austria just to name a few examples they also did not register uh, any uh, graphical shapes uh, <coughs> by themselves because they they did not they, they were not applied to an article uh, there was, however, one decision uh, of d dating from the early years of this century uh, by Justice Jacob saying that uh, the difficulty can be overcome if, at least if the design is a part of an, um, the, 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 the operational system uh, of a computer, so images that come up automatically when the uh, program is started, they can be, uh, then it's just a matter of formulation of the claims, uh, they can be considered as, an, uh, as applied to an article, uh, but not uh, probably uh, um, images that are generated by, by product, uh, uh, programs that are running on that computer. That seems to be very much of the decision that, that is valid in, in Japan uh, until now. Okay, so that was the past, however, and then um, came the harmonization. It was already uh, mentioned a few times that the practical problems, at least, that we had and the discrepancies that we had in countries uh, uh, registering practices before the harmonization, they were overcome by the way in which the law was formulated because uh, the law very clearly says that graphical symbols, after all, are a product, the, the appearance of which can be registered. So there was no more room for the argument that something which is, appears, for instance, on a sheet of paper or maybe even on a screen uh, is not applied to an article. Also, the other problems that we had before, the, the spare parts problem, etc., etc., the typographic typefaces, they were simply uh, done away with by way of definition. However, uh, as I, as, as, as I call it here, uh, it's sort of glossing over things that are still lingering on because what was not done in the course of harmonization was actually directly addressing the question, well, what is the subject matter of a design? Uh, that, again, it, it, it's, it's no longer of importance in the stage when we talk about registration because we have this wide uh, um, definition, but when it then comes to infringement, uh, it is still uh, very important to know uh, whether uh, the design is actually just one that applies to a certain uh, article or whether it is the abstract form uh, that, is, that is protected. And there we don't have any guideline uh, until now. Uh, this is something, by the way, that will be discussed in more depth tomorrow. Um, also, and this is a little bit what I want to con con contribute to what has been said before, we have this, so uh, this sort of odd phrase uh, in uh, the, the second paragraph of, of, the, of the definition saying, well, computer programs are not products, the appearance of which can be protected. Now, Paul, you said uh, the division is so wide that they needed to exclude something. Uh, I don't know whether that was really uh, the only uh, background that they wished to exclude at least something. Uh, there could be something more behind it. And indeed, if, um, a, if one applies a very, very extensive way of reading this, one could say, OK, if the computer program is not a product, then maybe the image that it generates on the screen cannot be protected uh, by industrial design, because after all, it is, so, it is a sort of appearance of something which is not a product. A possible way of understanding uh, this. Uh, of course, um, if it were understood like that, it would not really capture the way or, or what uh, um, computer programs are and how they operate. So it would be a sort of misunderstanding. But I mean, the, word, the words are there. So, so there is at least a theoretical possibility that they are uh, interpreted like that. When one goes back into the legal history, however, one, uh, it's, it's very uh, clear to see uh, that it was never um, intended to exclude uh, the graphical user interfaces, in particular icons. Uh, here I, I quote a face that you find in the um, green paper that came out at a very uh, early, in a very early phase when uh, the uh, legislation was passed. It said that a specific uh, graphic designs as applied, for instance, to icons or menus uh, are not excluded provided the normal requirements are met. So, so uh, that's, that is safe. However, there was a certain reason for the Commission to put this phrase in again. It was not just because they wanted to exclude at least something. They were a little bit afraid in that, 
in those years, these were the early 90s, you have to imagine, and in those years there was a so certain risk, or they saw a certain risk, that indirect protection for a computer program would be inferred from the look and feel aspects of uh, the um, program as it appears on the screen. So now this is something which is long gone. Obviously, we don't have that problem anymore. Uh, there is a clear distinction now, uh, or everybody has accepted that there is a clear distinction between the, uh, the computer program as such and what happens on the screen. One is not an expression of the other and not an ap appearance of the other. Uh, we had a uh, Court of Justice decision, uh, uh, um, the BSA decision, uh, which has a uh, Czech name which nobody can pronounce, but at least what is clear about it is that it's a, well, these two are totally separate. So this initial fear that there may be some sort of cross in, 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 in fearance of protection from the screen images for the computer program, that's no longer there. So um, what remains is, is it really is there nothing, no, no concern that remain? Uh, well, let me go down to, when, when I wrote these things down, by the way, I, I really, and after listening to what has been said before, I really noticed how far away I am from what is actually happening on the screen, because obviously the concern that I noted here are not really true concerns anymore. Uh, there are other concerns, however, that uh, uh, at least came to my mind when I was, when, when I was listening. But let me uh, first go to the last one here, because that was indeed something that was also uh, motivating the Commission at that time to put this uh, exclusion for computer programs uh, into the text of the uh, design legislation. Because again, think back, it was at the beginning of the 90s and it was, uh, and the computer, the, the software directive had just been passed. And there are two exceptions, two mandatory exceptions in the computer program directive. That is the uh, mandatory exception for online monitoring and for decompilation. And there was a certain fear that uh, people could register screen images and then argue on the basis of the registration of those screen images that somebody who runs a program without a license in order to, to uh, decompile or do this uh, online monitoring would be violating the design because after all the design would be appearing on, this, on, on the screen. Now I realize that this fear is no longer uh, very pertinent uh, uh, nowadays and also um, uh, there may be a possibility to take care of that on the basis of the, the limitations and exceptions that we find uh, in the uh, design directive and the regulation. Uh, these two other things, um, there may be certain things, that certain concerns with regard to competition. Uh, I, I realize that I did not express this in a, in, a, in a manner that really hits the point, but when I hear, when I, when I saw the images that were that were shown to us. And when I listen about protection of the user experience, I mean, there is definitely something problematic here because in the end, I'm thinking of this registration, this very creative type of registration of the avatars. Uh, um, th there, is a, there is a blending of function and form here and drawing the borderline between what is functional and what, what should arguably be free and the design registration is very, very, very subtle and very, very um, yeah, problematic, I would say. And then if you imagine that, um, well, at least in systems like we have in Europe, there is registration without any examination and the registration carries with it a uh, presumption of uh, validity. Uh, that really problematic things can happen on the basis of registering a whole lot of these things, uh, these simple shapes that we have seen and, and, and uh, other aspects, and then proceeding on the basis of such registrations against uh, those who are um, coming, trying to come up with, with competing program, uh, pro products. Um, I was also asking myself, and that was something that came to my mind when I was listening to the first speaker from, from China, uh, from... Uh, yeah, right. Uh, you said that uh, for the time being, uh, in design patents, we don't have the same situation in, uh, like in utility patents, that well, there is all this cross-licensing and uh, uh, yeah, the necessity actually to get in contact with uh, uh, your competitors and, and trying to form pools and whatever. Uh, by now, the situation in the, in, in the design field is, 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 is not like that. Now, if we move on in that 
direction, pr protecting the user interface uh, or, the, or experience, I guess we will pretty soon end up in the same situation. And you also very, very nicely said that, of course, as a person working in the patent department, uh, you are happy about the patents because it, it really is what, what you're working on. But there are indeed too many patents around, too many utility patents around in the ICT sector. Now, probably with the design uh, uh, registration uh, going in, in, in that sort of, of direction, we may end up in the same, uh, in the same field. Uh, so that was what the, I thought was, um, yeah, what I learned from, uh, from this. So there may be concerns, not necessarily the concerns the co that the Commission saw uh, when they put this uh, thing uh, into the directive, but uh, other concerns that are very serious. Okay, uh, we didn't have any problems. Also, that was said here with regard to, to GUIs. They are registered and it's, it's fine. Uh, again, if there are inter interferences with regard to uh, the decompilation and so on, uh, we have means to do that. Uh, but um, uh, there is still, um, th there are concerns and uh, these concerns also come out of uh, what has been said before. There are so many different types of rights that can be comp compiled uh, on top of each other. We have a whole bundle of rights uh, 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 that can be invoked here and there is no real synchronization of the limitations and exceptions. So I want to chime in very much into what Estelle has said and what will be will come up in the next panel, that we really need to see the holistic picture and think about the overlaps that we have and try to get to a synchronized uh, thing. Uh, and again, that will come up tomorrow. Uh, need for reform. I think uh, this exclusion of computer programs should simply be deleted because, because it's only confusing, it's meaningless, it, uh, the time has, has gone uh, beyond that. Uh, but we need to um, be more clear about the definition of the subject matter of design because even though we know what can be registered, we don't really have a, a good idea of what is protected when it comes to infringement. And then again, uh, do align limitations and exceptions with regard to copyright and other rights because otherwise we have problems with regard to the overlaps and need for further reforms uh, waits to be seen. I thank you very much for your attention.